Welcome to Samsung Next Meets. My guest today is Sohailo Fata, Director Platform at BMW iVentures. Sohaila, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Iskander. Could you give us a quick introduction to your fund and your role there? Sure. My name is Suhaila Fata, and I'm with BMW iVentures. I'm the managing director of our European practice, and I'm the director of platform, which is a unique role in our team focusing on the value add activities that we deliver to our startups. We're the 500 million euro venture capital fund of the BMW group, and we invest in fast growing startups that ensure real world impact on hardware, software, and sustainability. So Hela, you have an immigration background. Tell us more about it's that. It's obvious. Yeah. Um, my both parents are from Morocco. I was born and raised in Germany, and Morocco is still where my heart lies. Okay. Do you speak the language of your parents? Yes, I speak the language. Uh, obviously, that's super helpful uh, once you're traveling the country. Um, I still have family in Morocco. And in, in, in Iskander, I, I just think if, if you want to stay connected with your roots, uh, where your parents come from, where your family still lives, it is just essential. Any language is, opens up the key to a new culture. Would you say that your immigration background plays a big role in your daily life? And if so, how? Definitely, I would say that my background plays a big role. I mean, obviously, um, it's always the first impression if people see me, they would they just don't see a german uh, and then i it's always the same question it's always like so where are you from actually and then if you'd say i'm german people would be like mm, this doesn't sound true so our culture isn't as diverse as it could be here in germany yet um the same wouldn't hold true if someone with my looks in america would say i'm american or someone with an asian background would say that so that's really a german topic um at the moment and i do think that um being different and looking different comes with benefits and with disadvantages at the same time. So it's all about us focusing to leverage the benefits that it has to be different. That leads us perfectly to my, to my next question, which is, do you think coming from an immigration background helped or hindered your career progression? Did you face any challenges relating to it? Oh boy, where should I start? It was tough. So um, let's be honest here. It was very, very hard. It was not easy uh, throughout my entire school career and a university and first job that I had because you always the one that stick out. You are faced with stereotypes and bias um, that exists. So it is not easy yet given our you know, school system, which is not inclusive at all, just by design it isn't inclusive to generally make it but in my specific case and that's my very personal story the um disadvantages that i had faced or the stereotypes that people you know sometimes approached me with light up an inner fire an inner passion to be better than everyone else to work harder and this was really a drive that i'm sure i would have not had if things would have been always easy for me so generally saying yes um, that made me a super, super ambitious person. And I always knew that I had to perform, by the way, also because of me being a woman, um, better than everyone else. Um, and that surely had a positive impact uh, with the discipline and all of the hard work I put into my career. But on the same time, I, I want to mention, it's obviously also a, an advantage if you stick out, if you look different, if you act different, if you think different, but you have to have the guts to stand to who you are and honor your roots. and just not, you know, trying to fit in. That's a great message. I can relate to that. So Hela, do you see racial bias in tech? Uh, unfortunately, yes. So we're, we're definitely at the moment in time where there is more awareness for the problems that are existing, which is a very good thing. But um, generally speaking, you know, with, with all of the data that we feed into those tech platforms, we have a responsibility. If the data itself is biased, the output will be biased. Be it in speech recognition, be it in other fields of AI applications. And you know, there are a gazillion of examples that showed how, how obvious 
the problem is now how severe it is. I mean, I'm sure you know about the Google, um, you know, app that that tagged um, an African American couple as gorillas, and that's not a joke. This has happened. This stuff was online. It was a nightmare. I cannot believe how a large tech player such as Google, you know, falls in, into such a trap and is not sensitive for these types of problems. But there are other examples too. I mean, the simplest example that you can think of. If you, if you go somewhere and wash your hands, you know, the sensors in, in, in those machines where you get the soap from to wash your hands, they are programmed in the way where they can recognize light skin better than dark skin. I mean, that's such a stupid example, uh, but it shows that this racial bias is almost everywhere. It is not just in the high tech, in the AI field that, you know, all the, all the people are talking about. And it is super important that we make sure that all of the data sets that we use are not biased and in you know reflect the full diversity of our cultures and our societies true as and a female add, yes please go ahead and let me add it's gonna maybe just one more um more and more point here I, i'm i'm an auto tech investor right so for 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 my profession, it is super important that the future of autonomous driving is not going to be a future where the autonomous vehicles hit people with my skin color. So it's not just a very personal topic. It's definitely a topic that is widely discussed in the industry. Where I'm super proud and happy to say that the organization that I represent focuses very much on ethical guidance guidelines, and that all of the AI applications follow these ethical guidelines. So it's a topic that is super important, not just for the industry that I represent, but the, for, for the entire ecosystem to be aware of. And one bias that we haven't touched on yet is the bias in hiring. There's a huge bias in hiring. This is why you see very few female VCs and female VCs with diverse backgrounds, which is a problem. Right, which again brings us to my next question, a great bridge. As a female VC with an immigration background, you have a unique perspective. Can you give us your thoughts on why there is such a lack of diversity in tech and venture capital? How can we implement real impactful changes that result in more women and people with immigration backgrounds entering into the tech and VC scene? That's a very good question, Iskander. Uh, thanks for bringing it up. It's actually a huge issue, not just in the VC, but also in the startup and tech scene in general. There is a hiring problem. If the majority of the people that ha make hiring decisions are white, old men, this will result in very biased decisions when it comes to hiring. It is just, it's the nature of human being. We are prone to um, trust and choose people that either look similar like us or have a similar background or think the same way, which is, by the way, also in the VC scene, something which is an enormous issue. So if you want to change that, you need to make sure that there are more diverse decision makers in the hiring process. It's the same for the startup scene. It's, just, it's the same for the VC scene. When I speak to people about this issue, I quite often hear, well, you know, we just didn't find any woman. We were looking for someone, but there was no one in the application pool. Well, but then you need to look harder. You need to make sure that you find these women because they are out there. And at the same time, we also need to make sure that we encourage more young women to start a career in tech. That starts already at the school and university level, but obviously that continues on, on the working level. And for that, there are already a lot of great programs that focus bringing more girls into the tech scene, but they need to be more and they need to be governmental support to make sure that this talent is not lost. But in addition to that, you know, Iskander, I don't think we can just sit and wait here. So I cannot just sit here and wait until this change happens. If I would have just sit and waited for chance, change, by now, I would never be where I am. So I think it is critical that the people that want to see a change become active and participate in the change that they want to see. In my specific case, I launched a new initiative called the African Tech Vision, which plans to empower more female-led startups in Africa. So we're always speaking about the next generation of purpose-driven female entrepreneurs in Africa that we would like to empower. And the idea here is simple because actually there is so much potential in Africa. We just need to make sure that the opportunities that are provided are equally distributed. 
And that is not the case. In Africa, 90% of the venture capital funding as of now goes to experts, not even Africans, not even speaking about the issues and challenges that women are facing. So women are the heartbeat of the continent. And for anyone who wants to see change on the continent, it makes sense to invest in women. They are the long lasting agents for change. And this is why I'm active because this is about empowering the next generation. And I do the same here in my ecosystem where I'm mentoring a lot of young girls and women that actually want to tap into a tech career or VC career. Iskander, it's quite simple. I do not want it to be as hard as it was for me for the next generation because it makes economically and ecologically and socially no sense to waste the potential which is out there. So Hila, what advice would you give to young people from immigration backgrounds who are looking to found their own companies or just make a great career? Sorry. There are many ways to tap into the industry. Obviously, this is an industry which is based by networks and trust based. So, you know, if you want to start over in the startup and the VC industry, it does make sense that you early on participate in events, start to build your first um, uh, networks, try to get maybe an internship placement um, at a large VC fund, show your potential, show how amazing you are as a person. And there is actually one really lovely initiative that I would like to highlight here, which is called Included VC. So just Google it, included.vc, great initiative. It's a fellowship, which is supported by multiple venture capital funds, which aims to allow more people with diverse backgrounds into fellowship positions at large VC funds. It's a beautiful program which runs across a couple of weeks where you get dedicated input, dedicated content and knowledge to dive into the topic and it ends with an actual placement at a VC fund. So it's this, this is a great initiative and there need to be more initiatives like this. So also for every VC fund watching this now, please check out this initiative and validate whether your fund could be part of it. Great shout out. Speaking about shout outs, my last question. Are there any VCs and founders in Europe with first gen immigration backgrounds that are making waves in the industry? Oh yeah, there are actually um, some amazing people around, even here uh, in, in Germany. Uh, I would like to shout out for Miki Yokoyama. She's the managing director of Tech Founders. She's amazing. This woman is literally a rock star. She's super smart. She's super um, positive in her communication. She gets shit done. And she doesn't talk the talk, but she walks the walk. And that makes a big difference. I could name others, but for now, I'll stick to Mickey. Uh, she's definitely, um, you know, someone I highly rec respect and, uh, would, you know, just like to give a shout out for her because you know, at the end, it's all about that. We need to stand up for each other. We need to pave a stage. And just as you invited me today here to share my experience with you, it's an amazing initiative. We should do more like this. Agreed. So, Hela, thanks so much. You're so welcome. It was truly fun. Thank you. <laughs>